Hello, thank you for watching this video. Right, so in this one, if you cast your mind back some time ago in a previous video, I'll put the link up above, um, we took, we, I took uh, an image, digital image from the coloring book of retro computing, uh, which is obviously from RMC Neil um, and Stu Cambridge. Um, I took one of these images and converted it from a PDF to an IFF so I could edit it on my Amiga. Ta-da! And there it is over there. And this was the image that I managed to get across after doing some compression. Um, got it into the Amiga so I could edit it on there and play around with it. So this was all good. But now I've set myself a new challenge. And the challenge I've set myself now is to take this image, a digital version of this, uh, this spectrum, and see if I can actually edit it on a spectrum. Can that even be done? Can we take a PDF and get it onto a spectrum, 128K, into an art package and edit it? Well, what do you think? So the question of can we get a PDF file into a ZX Spectrum for editing, uh, the answer quite clearly is no, don't be stupid. What are you even thinking? <laughs> So before we get going, let's draw up a quick plan of what we're going to do. Um, so we're going to have a quick plan. Right, so what we're going to do first of all is take our PDF. We're going to convert it to a JPEG and scale it. Um, from there, once we've got it the right size, we're going to create a tap file. Okay, follow me so far. Um, so all this will take place, let's use a different pen. So this will take place on my Mac. You'd probably do it on your PC. And then with our tap file, we're going to move that over to oh, move that over to our SD card. I'm rubbish at drawing. Uh, SD card, then into div mmc, and then that file. We're then going to load. Into the spectrum's memory, and then from there, we're going to write it out to tape. Yes, cassettes, good old tape. So then from tape, we should be able to load that in to an art package on the spectrum. I'm going to use, I think I'm going to use Art Studio, um, but we should be able to get our image on there, which will be awesome. I would like to say a big thank you to Jim Blimey on Twitter, who helped me with the logic of this and gave me some of the code as well in order to do it. So Jim, a really a massive big thumbs up, thanking you for that. Anyway, this is what we're going to do, so let's get on and do it. Um, but I want to have a bit of fun with this, and I want to try and try and give it a go, see what we can do. So what I've got here is this PDF file from the Colouring Book of Retro Computers. Um, so we're looking at what we've down here. We're, you know, kicking around 9 meg for this. So obviously we can't get the whole image into the spectrum, but what we can do is actually take a section of this and get that into the spectrum. So this is the process of doing that. So the first thing I did, so I'm in Photoshop here, so I've cropped that down to something a bit more workable. So here I am, I'm down to just under four meg now, and this is the area that I'm interested in. Now, I need to get this down to about 6K in order to get it into the spectrum's RAM. So I manage this with some clever manipulation, and here's the file here. So look at this, I'm down to 6K. 
Um, if we look at the image size on this, so this is what I've gone with, 256 pixels by 192. This is around about the spectrum screen resolution. So, and getting it down to 6K at last, we're all good. Now, I'm not gonna take you through the process of how I got it down to this size. Um, there are, whatever art package you're using on whatever platform, if you know what you're doing with that, you should be able to manipulate the image and get it down to 26K. All I will say is that I got this image as a, it's a one bit image. So not eight bits for grayscale, this is down to one bit. And obviously in Photoshop, you can create a one bit image quite easily, but there are tutorials out there on the web who will tell you how to do that kind of thing far better than I can. Right, so I've got this image now. What I would do is save this out as a JPEG. And then we need to do another step of manipulation in order to get it onto the spectrum. And we'll pick that up now. So a number of you probably would have noticed I'm doing all of this on a Mac. So um, a piece of software that I need to use now is called ZX Paintbrush, uh, which is a Windows only piece of software. So um, I've needed to run this under a, a Wine emulator. Uh, to get this to run on Mac OS, but obviously a lot of Windows users out there your mileage will differ So you can just run ZX paintbrush straight from your operating system What I need to do now is with my JPEG I need to get it into a tap file format in order to get it on to an SD card in order to get it into the spectrum Because what we're doing we're going from a JPEG file, which is a compressed file um, a compressed image file and we need to just have the raw data so by doing it into a tap file so it can be read into the spectrum we can then output it from the spectrum into a format that a spectrum art package can read so this is one i prepared earlier but what i'll do i'll take you through the process and show you how i did this right so in zx paintbrush we will do file new and what we're going to do is create a simple tap file so let's select that and for the auto loader, it's important that we select standard screen string loader. This is really important. If you don't select this, you will enter a world of pain later on. So it's important that you have this. So with that done, let's click OK. And you should see an image with this message now. So please edit or replace this screen string block by using ZX Paintbrush. So what we need to do now is get our JPEG into here. And on the Mac, I'll show you how I managed to do that. Right, what I've done, I've found that JPEG file uh, in my file system and I've opened it up. So on the Mac, I've opened it up in preview. So here it is now, looking good. So all I need to do is do, uh, on the Mac, is obviously uh, Command A to select all of that image. And then I just do Command C to copy it into the buffer. Back now in ZX Paintbrush. So I've got that file in my, my memory buffer. So I wanna put it in here. So rather than go file, open, bring image in that way, what I need to do now is do edit and paste Windows bitmap. So I now get this dialog box, which I can make some changes to the image if I need to. For this exercise, I'm not going to. You may want to, feel free to play around with this. It's entirely up to you. I'm just gonna click OK. And there's my image. So my JPEG is, is there now. And as we see down here, this is a tap file, but also we need to make note here. It says click to move overlay, double click to draw it. What we need to do is double click, and that should now almost paste that onto that canvas. So we should have this spectrum image in there now and paste it. So what we can go ahead and do now is save it, but we'll save it as a tap file. So to save this, we're gonna go file, save as, then bring in our save dialog box and navigate to where we need to save it. Well, here we are with our save dialog. So um, because I'm running this under emulation on a Mac, I don't get the full Windows Explorer experience, but I've managed to make my way to this section. So I'm gonna select desktop, and then we'll give this a name, uh, Specky Image. And it's gonna be a tap file, and we'll hit save, and job should be done. So that's where it's put it. So let's go and take a look now. 
And heading to our desktop. Yes, here we are. This is the image, speciimage.tap. Here it is. It's all lovely. We're all good. 7K file. Yeah, we should be all right to load this in. So what I can do now is take this image, dump it onto SD card, dump the SD card, SD card into the div MMC, write a little bit of code on the spectrum to read it into spectrum memory, and then write it out so it can be then read back in by an art package. Bear with me, we're nearly there. Right, here we are. We're back in front of the spectrum, and this is some basic code that I have written. And what this is going to do, we're going to point the spectrum <laughs> at this spimage.tap that we created in ZX Paintbrush. So we're going to use the command dot tape in spimage.tap. So that's going to tell the spectrum to go here to look for a file. So I've got some print statements in here just so I can see what happens as, as we run through the code. But once the spectrum is pointed to spimage.tap, remember, that's the file we created in ZX Paintbrush, we're then going to load it using load, apostrophe, apostrophe, code 32000. So that'd be the memory address that it goes into. We're then going to save it out to tape. Yes, we are going to use one of these to save it out to. How old school is that? So what we've got to do is get that file into the Spectrum's memory, get it onto tape, and then from tape, we can load it in to a Spectrum art package. And any art package should be able to read off of cassette. Good, eh? Right, so then we're gonna save it out and we're gonna call it SPIMG using the same code command, an extra bit on the end here for memory address, and uh, we'll see where we go. So let's give that a try. Oh, look at this. Press record and play, then any key. So here we go. Okay, indeed, image saved. So we should have our image from the tap file on the SD card now saved out to cassette. Let's load it into something. Right, I'd just like to talk for a little moment as to why we're loading the image from cassette and why not load it into a paint package from the div MMC, from the SD card. Well, as of the time of producing this video, I have not been able to figure out a way to get an image file loaded from SD card into a paint package on the Spectrum. The only way that we think it can be done is to initially load it into memory from the SD card as a tap file, and then write it out or save it out onto a cassette tape as a screen dollar file, if that's the right terminology, but using that, that technology to actually get the data of that image out onto a cassette. And then from cassette, we then load it back into the spectrum when we've got an art package running. Because at the moment, I can't see a way to get an art package running on here to look for a file on SD card. I just can't do it. So all the, the packages seem to want to load from cassette. So we'll get that image file onto the cassette and then the art package will be able to load it in from cassette. I hope that makes a bit more sense. If anybody else knows how to do it, to load it from SD card straight into an art package, 
please leave a message in the comments down below. I'd love to hear how you did it. But for now, this is the method I've used and, and that's what we're going with. Right, so what I've done, I've wound the tape back to where the start of that file is. Um, I've loaded up Art Studio, nice uncomplicated display. <laughs> so what we're going to do, we're going to go up to the file menu and actually tell it to load in our file. But as we're doing this from the div MC, what we need to do is just take the SD card out um, just so Art Studio doesn't think it's loading from the SD card. So uh, with that done, which I have just done, um, what we're going to do now is go up to file and we're going to load file. And we called it uh, SPIMG. We're going to hit enter and we're going to press play and let's see what happens. That was the end of an old file. This should be our new one. Wait for it. And there, ladies and gentlemen, is a file that you saw being edited in Photoshop on a Macintosh. And here we have that segment loaded into an art package on the ZX Spectrum. I am so chuffed. So there it is. So we can do stuff with it as we see fit. I grant you it's not the sharpest image you're ever going to see in your life. But we've taken what was on a PDF and manipulated it and finally got it on to 128K ZX Spectrum. Obviously you can do this on a 48K as well. We've got that file size down to about six or 7K. We've managed to get it onto tap. We've from tap on the SD card, we then get to write it out to a cassette tape. And from cassette tape, we've managed to get it loaded into the Spectrum. I will take that as a win. Thank you ever so much for watching this video. Really appreciate your time and I'll see you on the next one.